Yo guys, what is up? Max in our Borderlands 4 video, and today we've got some news about the release window for Borderlands 4, and also the potential for the game to be a seamless open world game. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Let's get right into it. So our first bit of news comes from Variety, who interviewed Take-Two Interactive CEO Strauss Zelnick. Uh, Take-Two Interactive owns Gearbox now. Uh, they bought Gearbox from Embracer, which means they own Borderlands, and they also own GTA 6. Uh, and the title of this article was Take-Two Interactive Reveals Sale of Tale of the Shire Developer, Private Division in Latest Earnings, CEO Looks Forward to More Sensible FTC Under Trump. Now, obviously, there's a lot about this article that we just do not care about. Uh, I will leave a link in the description if you'd like to read it, but what we do care about is this part right here, uh, which reads, while Take-Two has gone another earning cycle without narrowing the release window for Grand Theft Auto 6 down from fall 2025 to a specific date, Zelnick notes that it will not cross paths with the release of Borderlands 4, which is set to be out between April 1st, 2025 and March 31st, 2026, uh, which is Take-Two's 2026 fiscal year. I think it's safe to say that we wouldn't, and no one would, stack up huge releases unnecessarily, Zelnick said. Now, this uh, implicates a, a few things. So we know GTA 6 is coming out fall 2025, uh, which is September, October, November months. And we know that they're not going to stack it with Borderlands 4 because these are two massive games. Uh, they don't want them to be competing with each other. They want to give both of them space to breathe and earn a lot of sales and make them a lot of money. And so that means that we're probably going to see Borderlands 4 in April, May, or June with GTA 6 launching September, October, November. Now, it potentially could mean that Borderlands 4, if they're aiming for 2025 fall for GTA 6 and it's not ready, we could see uh, Borderlands 4 coming out as late as 2026, January, February, March. That doesn't really make sense to me because Borderlands operates off of six month marketing cycles. Um, Borderlands 4 was teased on, uh, I think it was August 20 uh, or, or August 20th, uh, which means that we would be set to like a February, March release date following a six month marketing cycle. Uh, they did that for Wonderlands. They watched Wonder Wonderlands like March 25th, I think it was. Um, and so now we have it confirmed that it the earliest it's going to be coming out is April 1st, which uh, is a big deal for me personally. Uh, my second favorite franchise is probably Monster Hunter and Monster Hunter Wilds is coming out late February. And I was really f afraid that those two games would overlap. Uh, and so it's awesome that we know that Borderlands 4, uh, the earliest it's going to be coming out is April 1st. And I would expect to see it in like April, May if it's ready. Obviously, if it's not ready, they should take as much time as they want. But I think they're going to be shooting for these months for 2025 because they don't want to compete with GTA 6, which is coming out later. Now, the next bit of information comes from Randy Pitchford himself, uh, who was replying to a tweet from Joltz Dude. Uh, Joltz tweeted out, my new PC loads Borderlands 2 so freaking fast. Seamless loading will be a reality someday. Now, Randy replied, which he didn't need to do, seamless, you say. Uh, and Randy is known for dropping hints and teasers uh, and messing with the Borderlands audience. And so him dropping this with Borderlands 4 on the horizon is big uh news um obviously you know this could mean a lot of things but he also doubles down that he like is being very intentional and he will elaborate on seamless um now this could mean a lot of things but what i think it most likely means is that we could see a seamless open world borderlands 4. so what does a seamless open world actually mean for borderlands now this is a map of borderlands 1 as you can see, there was a ton of areas, but when it's laid out like this, you could kind of start to picture and see how everything is connected. Now, things didn't feel very connected in Borderlands 1 because everything had loading screens and travel times between different zones. You'd have to go up to the door and go to the next area. But when they're laid out like this, imagine if this was just all one seamless map, if there wasn't a loading screen between these different areas and you could just go from one area to the next. That's kind of what I picture a seamless Borderlands to look like. Obviously, Borderlands 3 went the route of like multiple planets. And I still think that's going to be the case with Borderlands 4. But I'm thinking that the multiple planets will be a seamless open world with obviously travel between them. Um, and I think that actually could work out really well. Now, a true seamless open world is jumping into a world where you could go anywhere 
And the story, the story is like typically not very linear. Uh, you can kind of go do one story mission or do, go do another story mission. I don't think that structure would work for Borderlands 4 because I think Borderlands just needs a linear story um, to be told. It would be kind of weird to go into like uh, the like end game area at level one because seamless open worlds, typically you can kind of go anywhere. Um, and so I think Borderlands 4, if they're going to go for a seamless, would have to be separated via planets. So you'd still have like maybe a spaceship and you could keep the game seamless that way where you'd get on the spaceship, you'd go uh, to different planets, but I think you would still have to be like for story purposes uh segmented into different planets but i think this could be really cool uh and i've kind of always imagined what it would be like to have an open world borderlands i was trying to rack my brain of what this would look like in terms of a looter shooter because obviously borderlands does not operate the same way that like a breath of the wild or a witcher works um and a game that has kind of already done this is the division two um division two has a big open map of dc that you can go and explore and it still has a cohesive story that you're going out and going to different areas and doing the missions there are strongholds and dungeons and activities and farming points um and it still manages to keep the story linear while giving you an open world to explore and i'm thinking that might be something that we see uh in borderlands 4. The big question on my mind uh, with the seamless open world, I guess there's two things. Is one, how would they do save quit farming? And two, how would the game be optimized? Uh, obviously, seamless open world is very demanding and Borderlands is already a game that's notoriously not great at performance issues uh, where you've got like 80 million projectiles all happening in explosions. And now you've got to load a ginormous planet with all of these things happening. Uh, it seems technically demanding, but if they could pull it off, it'd be really cool. The other thing is save quit farming. Obviously save quit farming or boss farming is a super key part of Borderlands and what makes Borderlands Borderlands. And so they'd need to find a way to keep the world seamless without you save quitting to respawn bosses. Uh, there's a few ways that they could do this. I don't know the best way, uh, but like, for example, in like Elden Ring, they've got the bonfire system where you go and rest at a bonfire. It's not really uh, like quitting the game. You're still in it, but you can respawn all of the enemies around you. I could see something like that working very well uh, or the ability to just like click a button uh, at any boss room or boss area has a thing that you could just click to like respawn the enemies. Maybe you have to pay like gold or iridium to respawn the boss, but I could see that working out really well. Obviously, this could be a huge change for the franchise. Um, I'm welcoming it uh, if they pull it off well. Um, I would be really, really curious to how this is executed. If executed well, I think it could be a huge change for the franchise that, you know, could be really positive. I don't think it's needed, if that makes sense. Like, I think Borderlands was fine with the more, like, linear progression, linear story. Uh, I prefer linear games. But it could be something that really innovates and separates Borderlands 4 from the previous games, which could be really cool to see. I'm curious to what y'all think about it. That is going to do it for the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. I will catch y'all in the next one. Let me know your thoughts down below on the potential of a seamless open world Borderlands game. And I'll catch y'all in the next one, guys. Take care. Peace.